Hello everyone, welcome back to some more of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Last time, what happened last time? If I remember correctly, we were about to lose, but then Susato came in with the clutch and helped us by giving us new evidence, namely um, Giselle's report that she's been researching, which is about a poison. A poison. The very same poison she must have used for um, the, to kill, what's it called, John Wilson, the victim. And we can already see here some of the special special characteristics match up with everything, you know, it, it para gives paralysis, so that's something. Which explains why there was no scream or whatever. Um, it has to come through a wound, which also makes sense because he was had, he had a dentist appointment thing, and yeah. Unfortunately, Giselle Brett decided to be basically like a little kid and break the bottle. Yeah, break the but break the bottle. So we can't like examine it further or test it for curare. So, with that being said, we we're able to do one more thing. Um, let's see. Rinosuke pulled the I remember this and. Um, essentially remembered the fact that there was some blood on the plate of steak the victim had, which Hosunaga, being the crime scene thief he is, found and yeah, presents it here. Issue is, however, is that under the plate of steak is, if we lift it up, a gold Caban coin. The very same gold Caban coin that Korakuda-san over there, if I can get his profile up, was looking for. So, we're going to have to ask him, you know, hey, it, why is it here of all places, underneath a stake? So, yeah. Let's get started. Um, oh yeah, I want to apologize again if... I want to apologize for two things. One, if my voices sound the same, I'm not a good voice actor at all. Which, yeah, probably means I shouldn't be doing a visual novel like this, but whatever. And two, more importantly, let me fix this there. Uh, and two, more importantly, um, for some reason, my capture card record things a second later. So if the sound doesn't like match up, I would like to apologize for that. It shouldn't be too noticeable because this is a, ver this is a, um, visual novel type game, so it shouldn't be too noticeable, but whatever. Anyways, uh, we called back the last two witnesses to talk, so yeah. Uh, what's all this about? Wait, well, I, I gave him a southern accent, right? Great. What's all this about? Why have I been called up again? Uh, what was it? Oh, right, southern military. How did I do that? I don't remember. Don't you realize it's dinner time for a little baby idol? Well, my son's belly is empty. He's fiercer than a pack of wolves. Exploited by the police, we were like miserable dogs, forced to bear false witness. And when cast from this courtroom, myself, I became a ruined man in a trice, a worthless, withered antique. Nothing more have I to say. The sun has set on this Rasute own shop owner's existence. Be that as it may, Korakuta-san, something has come to light that requires your clarification. As far as your Rasute memory serves, yeah. the literal, the literal, th yeah, well, you stick your knife right into his foot. The resplendent, splendiferous Hoei treasure. Okay, actually, let me start from the beginning. That's, yes, that's it. That's the one, the very one, the exact one that it is. The resplendent, splendiferous Hoei treasure that my rusty bones managed to misplace that fateful day. It can't be. Wow, my pain voice is, sorry, my ouchie voice is literally worse. Whatever. Huh. As I thought. Young man, enlighten this decrepit old fool. Puts me out of my misery. Where, 
Where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Oh, um, I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. We found your coin separated between a beefsteak and its plate, soaking in the seasoned meat juices. S -s Sandwich S soaking? S seriously? Clearly, it couldn't have fallen there by accident. Which means somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Somebody concealed my Hoei treasure between a slab of meat and a metal plate? Who would do such a thing? Such an unreasonable thing! Oh, unconscionable thing, okay. I swear, I need to get tested for dyslexia. Because I swear to you, that said unreasonable on my stream. And it's literally only when I'm talking, whatever. Uh, excuse me. Can I say something? Uh, yes, of course. Proceed, Inspector Hosanaga. I mentioned this earlier on in the trial, but I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. The Carnival is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant. It attracts wealthy diners, including many foreigners. Recently, there's been a run of similarly... Sorry, I had to fix my microphone there. Recently, there's been a run of similarly executed thefts targeting the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Hmm. Wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the bud quickly, especially with so many foreigners being affected. So that's why you were sent. Why you were sent in, in undercover, is it? Yes, I took on the job of waiter at, a, at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It seems likely that this Caban incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm. So, unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at work in the restaurant on a regular basis. The plate was the place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but the, ident the identity of the person who stole and hid Korkudasan's Koban is all too clear. What? What? I think the court would like to hear the defense's view on this matter. Tell us, who is the despicable scoundrel that stole Korkudas Koban and hid it under the stake? Well, it's not hard to think about. I mean, first off, the man had a different stake, and two, more importantly, when Korakuda-san just now was saying, Oh, why did... who would do such a thing? It was, um, what's it called? Yes, who was surprised. Plus, by process of elimination, I mean, the victim and, and Miss Brett were like, a table away, so no, and it certainly wasn't Ryunosuke, so it has to be him. Obviously, it can only be you, Sergeant Yesanosa. What? Well, how? How dare you, 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 you monster! Monster? I, I stole that command, did I? I am the master thief of La Carnival, am I? You're seriously accusing me of these crimes, cadet? But it wasn't me. It was Ido. Ido's the mastermind behind all this. Yeah, you're gonna blame it on your baby? Really? You would push the blame for your crimes onto your own son? An innocent little baby? It's you who's the monster, Sergeant Nosa. Uh. Yeah. Run, you run. Okay.
Nepalan Imperial Army, Sergeant Yesenosa, preparing to stand down in the Supreme Court, sir. Well, I am not excited to be a father. Look at his Waluigi looking self. <laughs> Do any of you know of the extraordinarily low wages the Nippon Imperial Army pays at those it expects? Is it Nippon or Nippon? Whatever. The Imperial, the Imperial Army pays those it expects to keep our country safe. I understand that a temporary increase in taxation owing to the recently ended conflicts in place. And I have heard it's hard for lower ranking soldiers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant? Wait a second. A hot meal? I mean... Is it really that hard to make a hot meal? I mean... It doesn't have to be like a stove or a thing. We could either just go outside and make a campfire, which, I mean, you're in the army, so you should know how to make a campfire. Maybe get like a pot and, you know what I mean? Or, I don't know, maybe that's just my naivete. Anyways, that's why you were stealing things at the restaurant? The place is haven with money. Every three days I'd go there and induce reconnaissance for a target. And I enjoyed chomping my way through a good steak at the same time. But isn't that more money down the drain? Like, it sounds like he doesn't bother with a knife and fork even. Which is worryingly believable. And your target that day was the old man in his caban. Yes, sir. I, he was an easy mark. I slipped the coins in my pocket without any trouble at all. Hmm? A veritable phantom thief you are. I was all set to leave the stake as I was halfway through the devouring when it happened. Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew that if the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. I'd owe too. So, I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could, on the double. I slipped it under the stake, hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous with it again at a later date. Yeah? You didn't think they would just throw out your stake or whatever? You were gonna rummage through the trash for that coin? This is ridiculous. Who said that? Oh, oh. Perhaps you can carry on with your absurd prattling in your own time. Well, Miss Brett. Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How rude of us. I'm quite sure that there's no need to detain you any longer at all. May the esteemed gentleman please be excused, Your Excellency. Hmm. Indeed. The theft of the Caban was due, clearly perpetrated by this baby-saddled sergeant. It would certainly appear unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. Well, I mean, that wasn't the cup. That the, wasn't the thing. Like, it looks different, yeah. The meat plate looks different. And he himself said it before. He hid it under... What? Uh, he beat steak when I was halfway through the devouring. So he hid it under his own steak. And so why would he like... It, that had to be his steak. Because why would he walk on over and then to the other guy that next to the dead body and hide it there? Where people would most likely be searching. Yeah. <sighs> N nonsense, is it? Ah, uh, um, well, oof. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Very well. Now that all questions concerning this witness's testimony have been answered, I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. 
and good day. Lunosuke, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I bid you adieu. Oh, no, uh, uh, and good day. Okay, that makes sense. And good day. Good luck, everyone, and good day. I can't, I can't quite put out what exactly, but something she said just jarred with me. I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. Uh, astounds me, a lump of meat. Pure madness. It's probably this, a hiding coin under a lump of meat. Not, okay, whatever. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. Uh, sorry. You can think later, but if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over. Is it? Never. Wait, Miss Brett. What is it now? I'm afraid, just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like you to explain the contradiction of your parting words just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What what contradiction? Attention! What new student nonsense is this? Well, what parting words are you talking about, Ryunosuke? Hide, okay, hiding coin in a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. That's probably the lie. Knife and fork. Beyond nonsense, pure madness. Did she pick up the steak? No. Because there's a knife and fork right at the table, right? Yes. So... I don't know exactly... Hmm. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. I'm going to need to see evidence, Council. If Miss Brett's words truly are contradictory, Where's the evidence to prove it? I don't know. Where is the evidence to prove it? Is it the play at stake itself? Because I'm thinking that's not like the stake itself that was used. Oh, this is 831 901, so this is the one I have to save it. Um, what could it be then? I wonder. Hmm. I'm thinking it's the play at stake because. The steak that Miss Brett had been eating before the professor was killed? Yes, go on. More accurately, Your Excellency. The steak was on the victim's table that was the steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. And now you're just splitting hairs. Not true. Doesn't something about this steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edge where it's be eaten eaten. I knew it! Literally the thing I've been saying when we first got the second picture. The, sta the two stakes look different. I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brett. Noticed what exactly, Council? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed no Englishman could even contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. Of course she did. She's a refined English gentlewoman herself. Then take a good look at the steak, in particular the edge where it's been eaten. Oh, it looks like somebody bit into it. Oh, the cuts aren't clean. They're teeth marks. Oh, it looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, if the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. But, but, what is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravishly hung. Yeah. Uh, she's on the ropes now. 
Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course, this will all be over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm about, I'm about to put this rookie in his place. Yeah? I've heard enough. You irritating little spectacle samurai relic. Of, of course, dear lady. Okay. What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? Clearly, the witness knows what this means. She's realized the, catast the catastrophic implications that these teeth marks in a stake have for her. Rinosuke, do you know where you're going with this? Yes, now at last, it's all come together. The mysterious teeth marks in a steak that had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. The reason why the bloodstain I know I saw somehow seemed to have disappeared. It's obvious. Most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Dr. Wilson that day. Unnatural as you put it, but what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. E everything? Yes, I believe these barbaric teeth, these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Conclusive evidence? How many times have I heard that today? You will know the meaning of the phrase. Typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to, presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been... what? But just because it hasn't been shown yet doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. This is absurd. This trial has run several hours already. And you say this evidence has to be brought forward? There can't be. I don't believe you have it. I don't. But there is someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. And if that person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Very well. I have a feeling this will be my last request of that of defense in, of the defense in this trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that revealed the truth? Obviously, Osanaga. Who else would? The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Osanaga. What? I I have it. Yes. You you think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's ridiculous. No, 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 I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on this stake with the teeth marks. Yes. Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court, uh, told the, court the following. I'd enjoyed chopping my way through a good stake. As well as admitting to stealing Korakuta-san's coin, he told us that he slipped it under the stake. You, you watch it, cadet. I'm a superior officer. Sergeant Nozo, could you please confirm something for me? Was the stake that you put the coin under, in fact, your own stake? And shut! A farmer tail, of course. I might be a soldier in the Imperial Ar Nippon Army, but still. I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she'd mind me manhandling her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the stake that the defense detective submitted as evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nosa's meal. But, but that makes no sense. That play was taken from the victim's table. Protection. Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her steak, nor did she have offered any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. To even suggest such a thing would be an effort to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly. Surely you're not going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two takes over. 
Actually, that's, a, that's exactly what I'm about to suggest. You did switch the plates? Uh, well, after it happened, the, um... When I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted up my stake and hid the coin underneath it. But then, when the waiter announced he was an undercover policeman, I thought I'd had it. If he decided to investigate my slab of meat, that'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet was arrested, and he was arrested and taken off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. With military precision and timing, I switched my steak with the one on the foreign lady's table. What? You can't have. I, I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for a strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what had to be done. Un Unbelievable! Yeah, yeah, so you just switched it. Hold up, wait a second. So you switched, so you're worried that he just, if he decided to investigate your table, which, I mean, I guess that he panicked, panic, but like, why would he investigate the table of someone that was not even involved? Like, he was like right next to the murder victim. There wouldn't be anything on the other table. What? And matter of fact, even if you were going to switch the plates, why did you switch it with the victims, with the table where the crime scene, the crime happened? Of course you didn't investigate that table. <laughs> However, fear or not, Prosecutor San. What now? I swear on the brass buttons of my uniform. That is all I did, sir. All you did? That's plenty, Sergeant. Yes. So, if Sergeant Nosa switched the plates over, it means he took Miss Brett's steak and the plate it was on back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Osanaga. Yes. Earlier in this trial, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's stake after the incident, but also the sergeant's. That, to preserve evidence, you had taken both. Uh. Oh. Oh, he has it right here. That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot. What can that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slab of tough meat, it can't have the slightest bearing, slightest bearing on the case. No, you're not wriggling your way out of it, of it, out of it this time, lady. I, I beg your pardon. Surely you're not that, for you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why this stick pan promises to prove such a problem for you. No. Huh. You're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see that plate was to confirm something that the defendant remembers seeing. Tesk thinks he remembers. I'm quite sure what I saw of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson. There was a clear spattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from Miss Brett. Let us not prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show the evidence to the court. Present the beefsteak and the plate that was originally, originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir. Sorry for keeping you. Here is the other stick on its plate, with the blood on it right there. Please, feel free to examine it. Cut cleanly, the blood stain is clearly visible. Look! 
Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it is impossible for Naruhodo-san to have shot the victim. Uh, it, it can't be. In fact, there was only one person who could have possibly shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. Uh, um. That's right, Miss Giselle Brett. It's you! Oh, what is her breakdown? Outdone by a Japanese. Me? By a Japanese schoolboy? No. No. No! Wait, that thing's alive? Yeah? How do you even hang that up? How do you even hang that up on the wall? Like... Well, that's the end of that. Back to Great Britain she goes. See ya, you weren't missed. <laughs> oh, no, never mind. Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Most unbecoming beha behavior for an English gentleman. Forgive me. Well, Miss Brett, I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth, this time. Gladly, Your Excellency. It was I who took the professor's life using curare. As you surmised, I took that I chose that particular day for one and very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you plan to kill the professor, knowing that knowing that no trace of poison will be found in his water. Because Kyorari was Kyoru Kyoru <sighs> Because Kyorari isn't heard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only, need to, I only need to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water, and it would all be over. I would place the stick I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone, and leave immediately. However, before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over and greet the professor meant that I had lost my chance to step away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in the chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point, so I concocted a plan at the, on the spur of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happen to know that the professor always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of curare in my handbag and my own pistol concealed under my skirt. Uh, under your skirt? So I was right. There were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. Placed it where you were sure that I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun, as I had intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up. Pick it up. 
That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even though at that point he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion, at which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assume Naruhodo's son was the culprit and apprehended him. It, I took him to the pantry that adjoined the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor in his chair around. Because, of course, you needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he picked up the gun. So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. Misdemeanor? That's a felony! You killed someone! That ain't no misdemeanor. Matter of fact, won't this cause an international incident? Because you, an English woman, came to a J um, Japanese soil, killed one of your fellow people, and then they tried to blame it on our per people. Like, wouldn't that cause an, in an international incident? Oh my god. And why did you even kill him? Seriously, he is a professor researching at the same university you were at. Matter of fact, you were probably he was a visiting student, wasn't he? A visiting professor of medicine. You probably went with him. Medical stool, yeah. You you guys were in the same department. He probably was your professor. Or whatever on this little field trip. Why would you kill him? Literally. Your Excellency. Yes. I wonder. Might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me, Naruhodo-san. <sighs> what a hassle. It would seem this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This, this can't be. Taketsuki Aochi does not lose! Not to the likes of this... this... rookie student! You'd better start getting used to tough... a tough opposition. Uh, Ryunosuke Naruhodo! Uh, uh, yes? This insult to the Aochi family name will never be forgotten! You've become conceited with age, Council. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. A thousand millennia may pass, and still the Auchi clan will never measure up to the Naruhodo clan. This trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Rinosuke Naruhodo, presented an excellent case. I... Thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and de deduction to unravel the truth is a modern methodology. After all, it has only been a few sh a short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining ac acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and new procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits. But what it will look like, I cannot begin to imagine. That is for the young to pursue. 
Kazuma Sogi. And we're back. Okay. And we're back. Okay. Sorry, somebody uh, needed help with something. Which is fine, actually, because I have a pause button on my OBS, so I get I get to see if that actually works. So that's good. Anyways, uh, what, what, do you, what was happening? Ah, right. Kazuma Sogi. Yes. After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can. Absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why do you look so grave all of a sudden? Uh, never mind. As for you, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Oh, uh, yes? In you, I sense, how can I put it? Unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. <coughs> oh god, that voice makes me cough. I am not going to do that for the thing. Whatever. I'm not going to do that voice again. Uh, uh, thank you, Your Excellency. It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Ryunosuke Naruhodo, not guilty. Oh, it's cherry blossoms instead of fireworks. That's nice. That's nice. Oh, wait, actually, now I think about it, that's actually pretty funny because the cherry blossom would re represent Susato's and Mikotoba's involvement in this case because it was them that basically helped us out. Like, if... Yeah, because I think, I think their symbol is the cherry... Bl every, every character in this game has a symbol. But every main character in this game has a symbol, I think. And her, his is... Uh, we'll have to see when they sh if they show their models again. But yeah, theirs are cherry blossoms. And, it, which, and considering the fact that if it was literally without... If it literally wasn't for their help, we wouldn't have passed this trial. Like, Susato got us the evidence we needed. And, matter of fact, even before that, Migotoba stopped, didn't let Asogi become the lawyer. So he doesn't, like, you know, they've been helping us from the start. So that actually makes sense now that I think about it. Hmm. 22nd of November, 2.46 p.m. Supreme Court's Aunt of Justice, Judicatures, whatever, Defendant's onto chamber. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial. Ryunosuke, you finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Kazuma. <laughs> no, no, it was a pleasure to watch you at work. So, you owe me an extra large sukiyaki from the place on UA University Street. Don't forget. Good afternoon. All your hard work has suddenly paid off. Oh, yeah? I literally thought... Okay, whatever. Whatever. You could have literally put Mikotobit, whatever. Also, yeah, you can you can see the cherry, cherry blossoms on her outfit. It's like pink with cherry blossom petals and whatnot. Actually, why are cherry blossoms pink now that I think about it? Aren't they white? Well, congratulations to both of you for proving out hodo sans innocence. Ah, our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh, no, I didn't do anything. Thank you so much. If we hadn't that, had that research port of Miss Brett's, I didn't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go the, to the university and investigate. Your father? Ah, yes, of course. For, forgive me for... Ah, do it. Forgive me for intruding on the court proceedings, Your Excellency. 
Susato Mikotova, Judicial Assistant to the Defense. Speaking of Mikotova, finally. Ah, there you are. I believe congratulations are in order. Naruhodo, you did an excellent job. Th thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you. After all, your efforts exposed the true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh, yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yume University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikotsova studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Presumably that's when you met Dr. Wilson? Exactly. In those days, we worked together for the same ho in the same hospital. Oh, you work together? I've never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides, it's your turn, Asogi. <clears throat> Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world. In science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what's happening on the world's largest melting pot. Uh... When was America founded? 1892? Well, it started pick. It was founded then, but it started picking up later. Uh, the great. When does the great Anthony Chronicles take place? It takes place near the end of the 19th century and the dawn of the 20th century. So I'm thinking 1889 or something like that, maybe. When was America a melting pot? Was it around that time? 1908. So it was a, it is like 1889, 1908. So give or take like 10 years. So yeah, I guess that makes sense. Britain probably would be the world's melting pot, but America is probably starting to get on its reins right now, more than likely. I will. Oh, I will. I'll learn all that I can. I swear on this. The spirit of the Asogi clan. You're not taking that sword to Great Britain, are you? <clears throat> of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go. And cuts down anything that's in my way. Yes, I have definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. That reminds me, what's happened to the woman? To Giselle Bretz, I mean. After all, she's guilty of murder. Oh, uh, yes. Her. <clears throat> it's not easy to tell you this, but... Uh, what do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She is the true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future for Shanghai. What? Shanghai? Giselle Brett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Oh, Hosanaga. Inspector Hosanaga! It was a hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate- But but what's this, all this about consular ju- <sighs> Use your words, boy, use your words. What's all this about consular jurisdiction? Sound it out like a preschool kid. We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? Oh, oh, it's because she's British. And if we try her and indict her and sentence her, then the Great Britain's going to be like, uh, you're sentencing one of my people, even though we got that treaty? It's going to create a whole scandal, like I mentioned earlier. But then who, who's going to bring her to justice? 
a British consular court will hear her case, somewhere far away, where our voices can't be heard. But why a consular court? Consular courts? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we've signed the friendship treaty. Yes. Oh, yes. In normal circumstances, you're right. Then, so long as this is not a serious incident of a highly political nature to our respective governments, they can't invoke a consular court just like that. Oh, can't they? Yes. She's a stu oh, yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our government's making secret agreements about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. So Miss Brett can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid that for the, for the young student, today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There never was any danger of comeuppance for her. That's why. That's why she's been clowning us this entire trial. Oh. That's why. That's why she destroyed that bottle. It's, it's, not, it's literally because nothing's going to happen to her. Because of where she is. I don't believe it. The British government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that we hand it over the custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case of a foreign student committing murder very seriously. But it's all going to change from now on. We can, we can make it change. This is a time of great turmoil, the new era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day I have no doubt that the woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming, and we're the ones driving it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. This evening calls for a celebratory drink. But, Professor... You're right. This is no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Ryunosuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. In that case, might I suggest La Carnaval? As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with ample food and drink. Um, you're a detective, Osanaga-san, aren't you? Uh, let's not worry about details for now. To La Carnaval! Will you accompany us, Prof Will you accompany us, Professor? Of course. Le Carnival's food is second to none. I shall go and attend to the paperwork for our Hodasan's release. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. So, Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I, I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Kazuma. Yes, Ryunosuke. I just wanted to say thanks again. That's all. You really saved my skin today. <laughs> I didn't do a thing. You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Your skills made the difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm? I'm not so sure about that. Hmm? To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during that trial. I couldn't help but think that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. Wh what Come on, be serious! If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it. For being a defense lawyer, I mean. Yeah, that is true, literally. The only time Kazuma ever like actually helped us was at the beginning of, was at the beginning of the trial, when we couldn't say nothing. But after that, after we got past that, all we were doing was literally speaking and then Cosmo was like helping us. Well not helping us, he was assisting us. He was like how do I put this? He was like like we, like we were actual partner. Like instead of him guiding us, he was by our side. You know what I mean? We were together, doing it together, instead of thing. 
Oh no, not me. All that tense verbal combat. I never want to go through that ever again. I just... I did what you told me to do. That's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do you mean? That's the point. Listen, Ryunosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? No. The ability to believe. To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it? I'm human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth, or some superhuman ability to perceive people's um, verb, people's um, body language and body ticks when they're lying, or some ver ability to see emotions easily or whatever. But you have to make a choice to b about what to believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed into a corner. But being able to remain faithful to what you choose to believe in, even then, well, that's not something anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Hmm. Believing in your client. Just look, at it, look, just look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little real experience, but you never stopped believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly hopeless situations time and time again, but you never stopped looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it through your own efforts and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Ryunosuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. It sounds serious. What is... Ah! You're still here, are you? Oh, Inspector Osanaga. I've arranged some rickshaw for, rickshaws for us. Let's go. Thank you. We'll be right there. Let's pick up this conversation again later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And your study tour to Great Britain, don't forget. Ah, yes, that too. So, my very first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Professor Mikotoba. Susato-san, who act as my, acted as my assistant. Inspector Osanaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still. It was because of the help of and support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. But more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. All right, first trial over. Literally the start of the game and the start of the series. As well as the start of, what's it called? What was I in episode uh, part four? So let's do five this time. Oh my God, it's literally the start of the entire, not just Great Ace Attorney, but the Ace Attorney series, because I am eventually going to play all the game, but still, wow. Um... Anyways, yeah, um, the main thing is that for each for each game, there's like five different cases, so, yeah. Anyways, um, as far as first cases go, that is not so bad, literally. Um, I mean, well, it's, I'm not, I'm, as I say, it's not so bad. It is amazing, to be honest with you. Like, it's, it's only bad in the beginning because Ryunosuke, like, literally was an idiot, which, I mean, he was new to the whole law thing, so that makes sense, obviously. But at the same time, it's, wow, just really amazing case. Um, the twists and turns were also nice as well. Like, even even though I played through this game before, I didn't see much of it coming. So, that's nice. Um, 
do I think this is the best case and best best introduction of the series? Um, I don't know actually. I mean, it's it's up there in like the top. It's up there in like the top three, for me. But I've I haven't played Dual Destinies or Spirit of Justice yet yet. I've only, or Professor Layton for that matter. Like I'm 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 trying to marathon the series right now to kind of play all of it, and. Right now, I've finished like the first three games, and I'm on. I'm on. Um, what was it? Edgeworth Investigations. You'll see that when I play that later. But whatever. Anyways, uh, I think this was a pretty good case. And uh, next time, uh, we are gonna do case two or episode two: the adventure of the unbreakable speckled bond. I will see you all. Next time.